Hello, I'm Chrissy, and I'm going to show you how you can digitize your watercolor illustrations using Photoshop and Illustrator. We're going to start off by opening Photoshop, and the purpose of using Photoshop to digitize your illustrations is to remove the background. So that's a really good first step to take. So open up your artwork first. Some people use a scanner to get this into the computer. For this image, I've just taken a photo of my artwork, but I would recommend using a scanner if you have one, um, because you'll get the highest contrast between your paper and the watercolor artwork, so it'll be easier to edit. We're going to make a few adjustments to this just before we get rid of the background to make it easier for us to do that. So the first adjustment we're going to make is to crop the image so we can just see what we want to. In order to do that, you can press C on your keyboard, or you can click on the crop tool on your toolbar. Use those corners to drag your image in so that you have exactly the image that you want to be looking at. When you're happy with it, you can press Enter to accept, and then V to deselect. The next thing we want to do is unlock the layer so that we can move it around later and you can do this in a couple of ways. You can click on the layer over here twice and then press OK, and that will unlock it. But that can take a little bit of time, especially when you're transferring between the mouse and the keyboard. So I've set up a keyboard shortcut in Edit Keyboard Shortcuts, which is to just press Command Shift U, and then that brings up the menu and I can press Enter, and that unlocks the layer. So you can do it either way. Now, one more adjustment we're going to make before we start to erase the background, we're going to use the Levels panel. So you can get this up by pressing Command L, and we're going to slide the white slider across to the left so that the whites become brighter, but not so far that we start to lose the detail of the watercolors. See here, that's too far. So I'm going to slide it to about there and press enter. And then I'm going to zoom in just to check that that's all okay and I haven't lost any detail. That looks all right. Okay, so now we're going to get into erasing the background. And the first step here is to create a new layer. You can do this by pressing Command Shift N. And we're going to make this a fill layer. The purpose of this is so that when we've er erased the white of the image, we can see any little marks that we've left behind accidentally. So you want to fill this layer with a dark, bright color so that any white or gray marks will show up really well. In order to do this, you need to get the gradient tool out. So you can use G on your keyboard to do that, or click on it over here. And I've selected a dark blue. You can use the color picker tool to do that then just click on the image to fill it with the color. Drag your artwork layer above that layer so you can see it. And then we're going to use the Select Color Range tool to remove the background. I've set up another shortcut for that, so I'm going to go Command-Shift-R. And that gets my color range palette up. So how this works is use the eyedropper tool that comes up to click on your background color. And this tool will select that color range. If you make this fuzziness um, value greater, it'll select more colors. And if you make it smaller, it'll select less colors. So I'm gonna start off with 50 and we'll see how that goes. So I'm just gonna select that area, press okay, and then press delete so it gets rid of all of that color. I'm going to press Command D to deselect that and then zoom in to just make sure that I haven't gotten rid of any detail of the watercolor, but I have. So I'm going to press Command Alt Z twice so that I can undo that because we don't want to get rid of any watercolor detail. So I'll go back into that color range panel and this step just involves playing around with the settings until you find out what works for your image. So I'm going to make the fuzziness level less so that it erases less of that color. 
So just press delete to erase it. And good, now we've got more of the detail of the watercolor preserved. That's good. And then you can just repeat this process over and over until you have as much of the background gone as you can. So I'm just getting the color range tool up and deleting more areas of background using different fuzziness levels to get the best balance I can. This step can take a while. When you can't do any more with that tool or if you're finding it frustrating, there are a couple of other tools in Photoshop that you can use as well. There's the eraser tool and with that comes the background eraser tool and the magic eraser tool. Have a play around with these ones and see if either of them are going to work in your circumstance. I find they work well sometimes, but not other times. Just have a play around and see what you think if the color range thing isn't really working for you too well. So once your background is as fully erased as possible, you're ready to save your image. Oh, got to get rid of the fill layer first. And then save your image by pressing Command S. And then Command Q to get out of Photoshop. Now we're going to move to Illustrator. So you can open up Illustrator. And the purpose of using Illustrator now is to vectorize the artwork. So to convert it into a form that won't pixelate. So we'll go either file open or command O to open up that file. And just zoom out so that we can see all of it. And the first thing that we're going to do is to just click on the image itself which should make this image trace menu available for us to do things with. If that menu isn't right there, you can go to window, image trace, and then it'll come up. So image trace is the tool that we use to vectorize this artwork. And all of these settings here will determine how your vectorized artwork looks in the end. The default setting that mine is set to is black and white, and we definitely don't want to vectorize it in black and white, so I'm going to change that to color. And then it comes up with this palette option and it says limited. I'm going to change that to full tone so that we can have as many colors as possible. And if your color slider isn't all the way at 100, I would change that now. You can open up these advanced options, but just leave them at the default settings for now and we'll change them later. The most important thing about this panel is this box right here, this ignore white option. You always want to make sure that this is ticked. The default is for it not to be ticked, so always, always, always tick it. This will make sure that when we save the final image, the background will actually be transparent. This will just make it so much easier to work with. And this is why we spent all that time in Photoshop making it transparent, because we want it to be. Right, once you've got all of those settings, you can click Trace, and this usually does take a while, so just be patient. Um, but this is going to vectorize the artwork. And we're going to play around with the different options in advanced once we've done this. Okay, so now it's all traced, you can zoom in, have a look, see what you think. And the main option in advance that I play around with is paths. 
the lower the number is here, the smoother the edges will be. And the higher the number, the more raw and hand done it will look. I really like things to look very hand done. So I'm going to put the number up quite high, so 95%. And this will make it look quite rough on screen, but when it's printed, this has a really lovely effect. And you can see that this gives it a much more hand-done aesthetic, and I really like that. So when you've adjusted the levels to where you're happy with it, it's time to save the image. So just press Command S as before. And then you can use this to make so many different things. I've used it to make um, my client's wedding invitation cover. And it added a really nice hand-done touch to their, their invites. I hope you now feel more ready to digitise your watercolour artwork. If you have any questions that you'd like answered, I would love to help if I can. So if you'd like to, you can go to my website, which is lettersbychrissy.com, and use the contact form to get in touch with me. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial about how to digitise your watercolour artwork.